Hey guys, this is Huge John again, aka Full Camera John. <laughs> All right, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at another game that I played and streamed live on my Twitch channel recently. In fact, just a few hours ago. This time it's a 3 plus 0 Blitz game. And I'm going to warn you guys, despite this being Blitz, this is not what would normally qualify as flashy chess. Okay? I have a slightly different opinion of that because I happen to like the type of chess that you're going to see in this video, but most people would not say that this is flashy or even exciting, but I promise you this is the type of chess that wins games and saves half points when you're on the defensive end, okay? So keep that in mind as this game progresses, and if you want a little bit of a challenge, because I like to give you guys something to think about as the game develops, try to predict the direction that this game is going. So I think you can kind of sense that this is not a short game. This is not a miniature. Try to figure out where this one is heading. And also stay tuned after the game. I have a bit of a postscript, and I'm going to add on to uh, a topic that I touch on in the game. All right. Enjoy, guys. One sixty-eight, nineteen sixty-seven. 1968, All right. <clears throat> it's a nice day again here today. Yesterday it wasn't so nice though. I'm gonna go here now. This little trick h3, queen h5. We um had some air quality pro problems yesterday because of the Canadian wildfires that affected the entire state of Minnesota in a big way. There was an AQI warning. Now, I've, I've looked at this before, but they can take, actually, because bishop takes e2, bishop takes f7. So let's just take here. Take. Um, a6. Let's go a6 to stop any incursion here. It was not pleasant outside yesterday, I'll tell you that. Very hazy. I could feel um, the smoke the particulates in the air, irritating my eyes. It was getting to me a little bit. Uh, I think the elderly, people with respiratory problems, autoimmune conditions would not have been, want to have been outside yesterday around here. Here, hey John, this, this is guys. I think that's fine. So I'm just consolidating here. I don't really mind that white has the D file. They can't do much with it for the moment. We're just looking to swap down to a better end game. Gary loves pizza. Thank you for the five gifted. Look at that. Gifting to play for fun. US Dave, Ankit, Sosa, and Funky Voltron. Thank you very much. Okay, let's try to win this. I don't I don't know if this bishop end game's a win. This is one of these positions I feel like only I am playing for a win because these pawns are doubled. The structure is much, much worse for, for white. But it's going to require some effort for sure. This would be, as Eric Rosen says, a funny mate. Okay, my opponent thinks better of it. <laughs> uh, G5 or G6? This is a tough call here. I feel like G5 might be the move. G5, F4... G4, maybe? I don't know. Let's try it. I don't have a ton of time to think about this. This might be the wrong call. Uh, let's go here. I'm thinking I might work the king around. This, this is now on lockdown. This is fine. So if ever white tries to do this and this, we just chill. We don't react to that. We should D6. I'll go here. So they're moving the king in first. Yeah. Okay, now I can try to force a trade, though, if I want. I think this might be winning, guys. I just got to get black, to, or white, rather, to exhaust their moves. And they're close. Their borderline exhaustion here. C4, I'm just going to go back. I'm not going to initiate the trade because then their king gets good position. 
Yeah, I think I can do this. This we're gonna this we're gonna ignore. This is instructive here. So the person who said three plus O blitz can't be instructive, I'm trying to prove you wrong. This is a pawn end game that is key to understand. So there's no breakthroughs. We're not taking and allowing them to break through on me. I'll show this after the game. Now something's got to give for white. They're going to have to seed ground with their king. And yeah, let's step up. If f4, I think take king, king f3, king d4 should be winning. Scoop these pawns. So here you can vividly see the effect of the extra pawn uh, not at all being helpful for, for white, right? Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to go here right away. I think this is the easiest way to handle this. Um, yeah, let's take. Take. There, there, there. Okay, let's go here. Make them backtrack to chase the pawn. Okay, they're going to go after that one, but that doesn't help them because I'm pushing. Now let's just hurry up. Yoik. Free move. Free move. Cutting it a little closer than we would like, right? <laughs> On the clock. Check. Check. And I think this will be mate. There's only one legal move here, right? King c8. We control the lines. There we have it. Yeah. So we like pawn end games. Always important to assess these. You should assess them if you have time on the clock. This is a classic type of end game where the major imbalance is the structure. And especially these two doubled pawns, um, well, the set of double pawns white has, even the h3 pawn. But I would say especially the, the doubled c pawns in particular because... When it boiled down to it, after the bishop trade or the impending bishop trade, you can really see how a doubled pawn hurts your chances of a breakthrough. Because normally with four versus three, if this was a healthy majority, white would be able to arrange some sort of pass pawn. But with this structure, they can't. Try as they might, they cannot arrange it. So eventually they took, they tried b5. Now I'm not going to take, right? This is, this is super important, guys. Do not take, even if it wins me a pawn, because what would white play here? White to move and win. You have to know this. I want everyone to answer in the chat. All, however many of you are that are watching. Yes, even you who's lurking. All 173 of you. <laughs> Very good. Very good. That, that, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> that, good job, guys. C6, breakthrough. C6, sacrificing the C pawn to force the A pawn through. So we're not er allowing some sort of break like that. There's a famous three versus three with three pawns on the fifth rank versus three pawns on the seventh rank. We're playing B6, and that example is white would win because it forces a breakthrough similar to that where you sacrifice... Both pawns to get the third one through. So because we can ignore the pawn on b5 and run white out of moves, they're going to give ground with their king. My king's going to enter, and white's going to lose the game. My structure's much better, too. Don't think white should have played this, but I don't know that they really have much of a choice, huh? Let's say they go king e3. I can do the same thing if I want. So sooner or later... Something has to give. They could maybe have tried this, but even here, we can we can step up. King f4. Just ignore what's happening here. 
I don't even think king d4 is going to make a difference. Throw an e5 check. Force the king back take. There's no points of entry for the white king. Yeah, white tried f4. I think this was a decent attempt at least. I thought they were going to take uh, the f pawn at some point. Try to track it down. I was thinking about doing this, but I can also play king d3. Allow this, because here I promote with... Well, not with check. The king is unlikely to still be there, but... Yeah, we can get into this situation where I promote and then again can get back in time and stop the pawn. So I think the bishop endgame is worse for white purely due to the structure. Even though white's fairly active, the structure matters a lot. And I think bishop e5, or rather, was it king d4? I think king d4 is probably the losing move. Yeah, the engine's already showing minus three here, so it's it's indicating this is not good for white overall, but king d4, I think kind of seals it in my favor as long as I'm accurate, because white can't prevent this bishop end, uh, the pawn end game. So, yeah, instructive little ending. That's why if you have a better pawn structure, all else being equal, trades often benefit you because you can sometimes carry that structural advantage through well into the end game and win in the end game. All right, so real quick, guys, this is the three versus three pawn break scenario that I referenced in the video. Many of you will know this, but if you haven't seen this before, it's pretty elegant. So we're looking at this position from white's point of view. White has three pawns all aligned on the fifth rank, and black has three pawns all aligned on the seventh rank. And we can see that the kings in this instance are quite far away from the action. They won't play a role in this one, but things could change if the kings were closer. So white to move, what do you think white should do? You can pause the video if you like and take your crack at this. Okay, so three versus three. Black doesn't seem to have too many troubles here. It doesn't seem at first that white should be able to win this. And you might even be thinking based on that king position that white ought to lose if the kings start inching over and black gets to the pawns. However, with the move b6 on move one, it has to be b6 if white wants to win. White will prevail. And that's because white is already creating tension and two points of contact. This is going to lead to open lines, and white's going to sacrifice two pawns to, to get the remaining pawn through. So after b6, of course, white's threatening to take on c7 or a7, so black can't ignore this, nor can they try to lock the position up, right? So playing c6, which might work if it was two versus two, is not going to work because we take here. Same thing on a6, of course, we take on c7. So black must capture this pawn. Let's say that black plays a takes b6. Now white needs to know to play c6. White's first move would not make sense if not for this. Pawn c6. Notice again the tension here. So this time white is threatening c takes b7. And that requires black to capture the pawn on c6 in reply. There's nothing else to do. If black takes on a5, white takes b7. Yes, this is going to vary based on where the, the ranks of the pawns are. But in this case, white's just too close. That's the benefit of having the pawn starting on the fifth rank. So b takes c6 is forced. And now white plays a6. And white's comrades fell in the field of, field of battle. But the a pawn is getting through. There is nothing to stop that promotion. And again, black is far too slow here with these pawns. So let's see that again. So b6 for white on move one, threatening to capture one of the pawns. Black took with the a pawn in this instance, and then we're playing c6. Not a6. We're not going to sacrifice the a pawn here because black plays b takes a6, and there's no clear path for this pawn. We're sacrificing the c pawn here to force b takes c6, which clears the path, clears the a file for the white pawn. And knowing that, we should easily be able to figure out what happens if c takes b6. It's just the mirror image of that, of that operation. White plays a6 here. So it gives the a pawn in this case, trying to knock out the b7 pawn, which is the lone defender of the c file and this pawn advancing through c6. And again, white wins. So only b6 gets the job done here for white in terms of winning the game. With this in mind, you should be able to think about if the pawns were on different ranks, how that would affect things. Uh, 
it, this is a famous instance where symmetrical pawns can overwhelm uh, the other side if it's three versus three specifically. Wouldn't work if it was two versus two. Let's imagine these A pawns were gone and white played B6 again. Black could take or push. Either would be fine. There's not enough points of contact, but introducing multiple points of contact and mul multiple tension ideas is what gets the job done here. If you want a little, little quiz, let's say we flip this and look at it from Black's point of view. Let's say it's actually Black to move here. So Black to play, what should Black do? You can uh, ponder that for a moment. I'm tempted to have you guys just write this in the comments, but for the sake of bringing the, the example full circle, I'll tell you. All right, so Black to move has to play the move B6 here. Pawn B6, so let me make this black to move by just making a passing move for white. Pawn B6 is forced because otherwise white will get to play B6 again, right? And playing C6 or A6 is not going to cut it because white can again respond by creating uh, a highly contentious move, A6. Notice the two points of contact. And here's another breakthrough idea. This is the type of thing I was trying to prevent in the game that you just saw. So if B takes A6... White ignores the A pawn, takes the C pawn instead. Same thing if black takes on B5. White takes B7, and clearly white's going to promote. So it's imperative that black play B6, which prevents the multiple points of contact with the middle pawn advancing. And here we could have some trades. Just remember to take symmetrically so you don't allow a pass pawn again. So we could have some trades. Now we're in like king and pawn endgame territory king and pawn versus king and pawn or if one side wins a pawn i think in this case it's most certainly going to be a draw you can see that white doesn't have the angle on black we're looking at a drawn game here and by the way what i just did there flipping the board around considering it from both sides that's how you get good at end games you consider the the perspectives of the players uh, and you try to analyze dispassionately and you also play with the parameters kind of tweak around the margins, say, hey, like, what if the pawns were starting on white having the pawns on the second rank and black having the pawns here, or maybe somewhere in between would be more interesting to work out. What is the Tempe situation like there? So famous pawn endgame breakthrough, three versus three. The king position matters. If black's king is closer, that obviously can help black out because they might be able to intercept one of the white pawns. So happy to share this with you guys. Let me know if you have any questions. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.